The Calamity Box. An instrument of interdimensional travel that housed three powerful stones that were sent by the Guardian of the Multiverse. A part of their test to see how mortals would handle unlimited power. Though the series finale of Amphibia answered the question of who created the stones, it was still unknown after the show ended who created the Calamity Box itself. The Guardian created the stones for immortals from all walks of life, but it's very clear that the music box was tailored for amphibians by an amphibian. Well, thanks to an excerpt from the upcoming Marcy Journal, releasing this November, we finally know who forged the box that started it all. Get ready, because this information will have you view this character and their role in the story in a completely different light. And before we begin, don't miss out on our dope merch over at Toon Drip. Cloves inspired by our favorite cartoons, with more designs on the way. Link in the description. Recently, Matt Brawley hopped on an episode of Post Toot, a weekly talk show hosted by Sarah Nicole Robles, Cece Jones, and our homie, Rebecca Rose. Matt's appearance transforming this special episode from Post Toot, typically about the Owl House, into Post Croak. And it's all about Amphibia, baby. I recommend checking out the full thing so you can catch all the cool and fascinating questions Matt answered. But what we want to focus on is his gift to the audience. A coded message from the Marcy Journal, written in the ancient Amphibia alphabet, which of course has been deciphered by fans over the course of the series. This page gives us much needed lore on a certain newt. It reads, The inventor of the box, the wisest newt of them all. She managed to unite the kingdoms under one banner, a banner of interdimensional conquest and ambition. Peace came to Amphibia, and with it, a golden age. However, this pace led to the conquest and subjunction of other worlds. The inventor of the box faded into obscurity, burdened by guilt and sadness. Burdened by guilt and sadness. It is said that not even death could hinder her quest for redemption, and that she still travels the world in spectral form, alongside her winged purple companion to this very day. What is her duty? Will her soul ever find peace? Wisest Newt? Quest for redemption? Purple companion? Well, if I didn't know any better, I'd say this message was talking about Valeriana. Vendor at the Bazaar Bazaar, Stonekeeper of the Second Temple, and the Guardian of the Calamity Box, who enabled Anne, Sasha, and Marcy's full power. She is not just the Guardian of the Box, but its creator, and apparently played a pivotal role in Amphibia's history, inadvertently influencing the rise of the Leviathan Empire. She's also apparently a g -g -g ghost That's all some pretty overwhelming information. So let's take a moment to map it all out and make some sense of it. As Valeriana stated in the Second Temple, she was once a part of an ancient order dedicated to the study of the Calamity Gems and their three temples. She also stated she was the rightful owner of the box, which we now know was quite literal. What I find really interesting is that this message references that she managed to unite the kingdoms under one banner. But what kingdoms? In present day, we just have Newtopia as a kingdom, with the Toe Towers and the Frogs in the Valley existing around it. However, if you jump back to the core of the king, it was clear that these three amphibian races did live in harmony. So it sounds like long before Andreas's own story began, the Frogs, Newts, and Toads all lived in their own kingdoms, meaning there were other castles and rulers, and not just Newtopia with one king. I also believe this implies that each kingdom had control over a certain gem. And it's easy to figure out which gem and temple correlated to a race. The first temple, which excels in wit and its green stone, belonged to the highly intelligent newts. The second temple, which excels at heart and its blue stone, belonged to the humble frogs. And the third temple, which excels at strength, belonged to the robust toads. With these kingdoms caught in deadlock, it was impossible for Valeriana and the rest of her order to properly study the stones and realize their full potential. 
It seems as if she figured out that if all three stones were brought together, they could enable interdimensional travel, using this as a pitch for the three kingdoms to come together and share their stones. As King Aldrich once told Andreas, if they lost the box, they would lose their way of life. I think Valeriana envisioned unlimited resources out in the multiverse that Amphibia could use to better their own lifestyle. There'd be no more need for fighting if everybody was able to get what they want from other places. But what Valeriana didn't account for was that other life out there would be affected. Nevertheless, the Three Kingdoms unified, and now harboring the Three Stones, Valeriana created the music box. But I don't think it was without trial and error, given that in Bizarre Bizarre, Valeriana's stand is full of artifacts that have a strong similarity to the box. Likely her other attempts at instruments that could house the stones, but didn't work for one reason or another. Or perhaps they did work, but utilized the stones in ways that differ from opening portals. From here, we would have the Golden Age of Amphibia, as seen in the Core and the King. Frogs, Newts, and Toads living in prosperity with one another at the expense of other worlds. Around this point, Valeriana would disappear appear, agonizing over the suffering she's brought to these other worlds, clinging onto the hope from own prophecy that three human girls would one day arrive and save not just Amphibia, but the multiverse. Somehow, whether through magic or sheer willpower, Valeriana would survive death becoming a ghost that would phase in and out of reality whenever she found to be convenient. Which explains her elusive behavior throughout the series, only appearing at random and at moments where Anne needed her the most. If she didn't appear at the Bazaar Bazaar, Hop Hop wouldn't have ended up with the box and we wouldn't have had a domino effect, where, because of Anne and Hop Hop working through their issues, Marcy was able to win the first temple. If she didn't appear at the second temple and let Anne leave with the half-charged gem, Anne wouldn't have retained her power, which came in handy quite a few times. And of course, if she didn't pop up in the last episode, the girls wouldn't have gone Super Saiyan and saved the day. The finale is also the only time where they really leaned into her being a ghost and not just like a magic newt lady, with Marcy and Sasha addressing how Valeriana showed up out of nowhere, waiting for them when they re-entered the castle. A pretty wild development, but one I'm very happy knowing. It's the closure I didn't know I needed from the show. And I'm glad that after hundreds of years, Valeriana could finally rest in peace. With the multiverse saved, the music box destroyed, and the future looking bright. And on that note, comment down below how you feel about this information. Did you have a feeling Valeriana created the box? Did you think she was a whole ass ghost? Or does that come as a shock? Drop your thoughts in the comments down below and keep the conversation going by giving me a follow on Twitter and Instagram at Vox and the Roundtable at RoundtableVids. Once again, check out Toon Trip, and if you enjoyed this video, please throw a like and subscribe to the Roundtable with notifications on so you never miss a video. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you nerds later. Peace out!